All right, everybody, welcome to our next 15 and 15 session. We're glad you here. You are here. We're going to get started right away and we're going to try to end on time. So just a short, fast blast. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to my wonderful colleague and librarian, Ann Jung Matthews. Hi, everyone. It's really great to talk to you about sifting. And this actually, um, this 15 and 15 is not enough time to really talk about all the nuances of this, but hopefully it'll get your juices going and thinking about uh, ways that you could use it in your own classroom situation. Ironically, my own, when I taught sifting, I had an image of a flower sifter and I realized the students really weren't into that. So I changed to this sifter, which is actually from like, it's, it's public domain, but it's it's a it's a um it's from a crime scene they were sifting for certain things in some place in south carolina and sort of when we think about sifting and teaching our students you know there's some very real dangers you know to not sifting and not finding uh, or weeding out the bad information so i'm going to take you through very quickly what i do and what i've started developing this news literacy um it, it, uh, unit in my CM2405 public speaking class. And uh, upon request, I'll do it in the Wicked Problem as well. So what I do in my course um, is I should preface it by saying I did um, attend for two summers in a row, a free webinar uh, by the company Adfontes Media, who are the creators of um, the um, uh, media bias chart. So it kind of gives you an idea of, it, if you look at it, and I'll show you pictures of it in a minute, you'll you'll see that um, it's a um, it's a good place to see. Okay, where do where does this you know uh, where does this source how are we rated? Um, you know, Adfontes Media have a, a, a huge team um, that comb through articles and news articles and reports, and then they rate them according to a very complicated um, uh, uh, platform or rules for doing that. Um, so what I usually do is um, I attended the webinar to learn a lot about, you know, how they look at things and it, it helped me, you know, how they rate their news stories, which helped me kind of frame how I wanted to introduce this to the students. So I took two elements um, where I asked students to think about a story or mainly news stories, but also reports and, and news articles, uh, magazine articles, and that, you know, what do you mean by reliability? And what I liked about it is breaking it down by two things, expression and veracity. And I'll explain that here, so, or truthfulness. So expression, and I love this because when you're looking at a news article, um, it's, it's basically who, what, when, and where is, you know, so you, you look for that. And so if it's just who, what, when, and where, that's, that's presented as fact. But there are other gradations in a news story. And I think many of you have seen those in news stories that you may have read. It's presented as fact with some analysis. Um, you know, they'll, they'll talk about um, a, a, um, a shooting event and then they'll say, uh, the, this is, it, it's not who, what, when and why, but they'll add that this is the 300th shooting that we've had this year, uh, which may, may or may not be, um, pertinent to that particular story. Then you've got your analysis articles, your analysis with some opinion, and then your pure opinion pieces. And those, fortunately, the major networks uh, are really um, do label those for us, you know. Um, and so, um, you know, basically, in I look at the expression as sort of the courtroom analogy the in fact, your who, when, when, where, why, and then something as an opinion is something similar to a, an opinion piece by a, a political con contributor or a person um, like a, a, um, a, a um, an attorney, a defense attorney who's presenting one side of a case. So that's expression um, and, and, and where they go beyond just the facts of an article. Then, then we get into truthfulness and i kind of like this it's it's it looks easy on paper right true easily provable and widely acceptable mostly true mostly and i won't read all those through you for you because you're perfectly capable of reading them yourself but it sounds easy okay i'm going to rate this on truthfulness is it false easily disprovable and the facts disproving it are widely accepted um 
And I didn't realize how hard it was until I was in this six week seminar and they gave us a bunch of, you could come to an alternate activity where you rate news articles. And I thought, oh, I got this, this isn't hard. Well, it's a little bit more complicated than you think. Uh, and I've spent a lot of my summer just um, looking and reading at different news articles and thinking about how I would rate them um, and what ones I would wanna use in class. So what I tell my students is, okay, this looks easy, right? You get on and read. Uh, with the real, um, and this is the Ed Fontes media chart that I mentioned, um, this is their ratings. I never show these to students. This is the static chart. Um, so anything that I've talked to previously, um, that, that expression, you'll see it, um, these ratings. They also um, go on and, and rate it as left-leaning, right-leaning. And I never get into that much with my students. I'm just looking really primarily um, at the, uh, the left-hand side of the screen where we're looking at, at truthfulness and accuracy. So, you know, some professor or some students, especially high school librarians, may show this chart, um, but I don't want to bias the students on what they're seeing, so I sort of keep it out of sight and just mention it at the end. So let's talk about sifting, which is why you came here today. So I realized after attending the Ed Fontes uh, webinar um, that um, the things they were talking about were really about sifting. I put a, a, a full biography of Mike Caulfield in the handout for today. Um, and um, so you can read about his background. He is a Keene State College graduate. Yay, it's pretty awesome. He's kind of a local guy. And, um, and a couple of my librarian colleagues knew him back in the day uh, when he lived in New Hampshire, now it's the University of Washington. But I'd like his sift method. And that's the idea that you sift like this, this, like this crime scene, you know, they're sifting through the evidence. Um, the way we used to sift flour to get all the impurities out of it. Um, and, and it's stop, investigate, find, and trace. And I think one of the things um, that I like about looking at expression um, is because the way things are expressed in the analysis um, that you may see in certain articles really speak to that first thing, the S, which is I tell students is the hardest thing to do. You read an article, somebody posts something on Facebook and you say, darn it, I knew it. I knew I was right. The one that I, I uh, still rejoice at is, um, I think I can say this, maybe say this, but there was this article that someone posted on Facebook that fundamentalist Christians um, have suffered a, a brain damage sometimes in the past, in, in their past. And I'm thinking, okay, great, that's great. That proves what I knew, that those people are crazy. And so that stopping is a really, really important part of the process and probably the hardest for all of us because it's so easy in social media to say, great, click, share. And, and that's how disinformation you know, gets continually um, spread out there. So then we get to, okay, we've stopped. We've said, okay, we've taken our five minute you know, break here. And then the next part is to look at a source and investigate the source to see what others are saying about it. So are other news organizations picking up on this? Like I saw a blog on someone post on Facebook that Queen Elizabeth is suffering. You know, one of the first thing I thought is, oh, well, let's see if that's that's the case. And sure enough, it's it's out there and various news organizations are, um, are, are covering the health of, of um, Queen Elizabeth. Um, find better coverage. So is there other, are there other sources out there that also talk about it in a better sort of way with more resources, with more references, with a better explanation of how um, about this issue? And then of course, the important thing also is tracing, tracing claims and quotes in the media back to the original source. So many clips that we see on Facebook or in news organizations are just clips of a speech. So I tell students, find if you can the full speech go back and listen to the whole thing. Listen to the whole media story. Watch the entire um, debate that may have been broadcast. Um, watch the ad that the person is broadcasting. And, um, and, and I guess that all takes time, you know, and that's one of the first, that's the hardest part about the SIFT, man, the SIFT method is that like this crime scene on the screen here in front of you, it's not done five minutes before class. It's not done five minutes before you um, um, you're or, or giving a speech. So I love these tools for sifting. So it's not enough to just tell students, okay, you need to sift. You need to comb through the, the, the crud and find the good stuff. It's not enough to say that. You have to tell them how to do it. 
And so what I do in many of my classes is I introduce these tools for sifting. Of course, I'm going to talk about the library resources and databases. This is a great chance to show them what they are, the, the sources that they already subscribe to. Um, look at fact-checking sites. So this summer, I read this book, this really cool book. I oh, can't really see it here. This is my background called Fake News, Propaganda, and Plain Old Lies, How to Find Trustworthy Information in the Digital Age. This book and a, you know, a, a, an a earlier book called Disinformation, published by um, Donald Barkley, who is a librarian. Yay, I'd love to see when librarians publish this. Anyway, <clears throat> look at fact checking sites so i say look at fact checking sites but the nice book um this book has an entire this one that i just read this summer actually i bought my own personal copy so if you want to borrow it let me know um i've gone through all his fact checking websites that he has in his appendices and i'm going to select some of the better ones <clears throat> some of them are you know the book was published two years ago and now some of those sites are are no longer operating so i encourage students to check reputable news sites you know, watch the full length. Um, I'm running up on time. So I just wanted to say the other thing I asked my students to do is when I asked them to sift is to rate the evidence by reputation, likelihood and incentives. And that's basically what we've done in other, I think we all do it, We I just call it this. You know, how much have you trusted the source in the past? It's only a starting point because the New York Times is very reputable, but it, it has had its dark days with bad stories. Um, I also ask the students to ask yourself the likelihood. When should um, when should you question information? When the claim seems really far fetched that you could, you know, that monkeypox will kill you in two weeks, you know, you should say, okay, what does this mean? Or that the vaccine is going to give you autism, or the vaccine has a chip in it. And of course, that'll stop thing when the claim appeals to you emotionally um, is another key that you should stop. And then also you look at, I asked them to remind them, you know, did someone benefit from the publication of this story? Did someone not just, did someone sponsor this story? Did someone make money off this story? And is the author that's affiliated like a researcher? Are they, they could be a legitimate researcher, but they're affiliated with a particular political issue or party or issue. So I, I, I interweave that all in. And then finally, coming back to the media bias chart, I use the media bias chart to search for samples on my own before class. So I pre I pre select the articles that I have them um, that I have them evaluate, and you know some of them are really easy, like vaxxed out nurse passes out after getting COVID vaccine. You know, um, I pick the ones. I use my static chart. Actually, I have a membership to the media bias. I, I, I ponied up $49. So I can look at all the stories and open them up and read them myself, which is a really cool tool. So, um, so I always start over here way on the left and then way on the right and find the most outlandish things. And then I may ask them to look at a story from the AP or Reuters, which are pretty much, you know, straight on. So they can kind of compare the two. And then I start working out on the outliers, but I never tell them at any point how the stories were rated by Adfantes Media or me. Um, I, I, I sort of keep this out of sight. I mention it if they want to see it, um, but I use this as a tool for finding articles. So my appeal to you is if you find articles that look great, that you would love, you know, send them to me um, on my to-do list, my wish list, is um, to I'm, I'm going to be compiling some um, some places some some starting points for people to look at that I've used. So I spent a lot of the summer reading news, and I felt really guilty about it. But I also learned a lot about the the fine nuances of news stories, and it's it's complicated. It is complicated. So I hope I give the students not just tell them to sift, but actually get them to sit in class and do it. And then I use Mentimeter. I'm using Mentimeter here. Mentimeter has a polling feature. So I ask them to poll, you know, and so they get to use their cell phones and, you know, comment that way. And then I don't let anybody off the hook. I say, okay, I don't know if you can see it on this screen, but, you know, you can give people hearts and you can tell me that you're paying attention. It's a really cool tool. It's used by UNH. It's one of my favorite tools. Um, that um that gets the students they have their cell phones anyway so why not have them use them to 
participate in polls or make comments. Um, as we finish, I'm also I'm thinking time. that reminds me that we should probably have a 15 and 15 on Mentimeter because it's such a handy little tool and I use it all the time. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you, Anne. Thanks to everybody. Um, we will stay on for a couple minutes if you need anything else, but that concludes our program. Thank you all.